awesome set. Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'll be taking you guys through the paintwork on this BMW 420i. The color code is B53 and the name of the color is Sparkling Brown Metallic. So as you can see first up, it rolled in from the panel shop, couple of repairs on it. I've obviously feathered that out, scotch brighted all the edges, I've then masked it up and we're getting a couple of coats of primer on. But first up, I did put some plastic primer over the bare plastic parts on the rear bumper bar and a little bit of etch primer on the uh, bare steel on that quarter panel. As you can see, I'm using the heat lights in between coats. It's important to not get your panel or your paint too hot in between coats and also after you've put all your coats on. So that's where that little digital infrared thermometer does come in handy. I picked it up for like $15 off eBay. So it's definitely a handy thing to have around the workshop. I like to check my panel temperatures, my paint temperatures, and it's just generally a handy thing to have around the workshop. You never know when you might need to find out the temperature of something, whether or not your coffee is too cold and you can give the apprentice a clip over the back of the ears and say, mate, I told you I want my coffee to be 65 degrees exactly when I get to work at quarter to eight in the morning. But as you can tell, I'm obviously not going into much detail on the prep work in this job. We'll just get it straight in the booth and start painting some shit. So I did block it all down. I then uh, buzzed down the surrounding blend areas. I use 600, you can use 800, 1000, whatever. Um, I've then got it in the booth, prep's all done, blown it all off. Then we'll get it masked up and splash some paint on it. You may have noticed I had a tailgate and a couple of other parts I was originally planning on painting in the booth at the same time. Although it is a nice size booth, sometimes you've just got to make the executive decision and say enough is enough. I just need to focus on this BMW and make sure I get that right. I did run a risk of getting a little bit of overspray on this and then you just get that dusty overspray around and you get too much crap in there and you're cramped up and that. So I just said to the, um, the manager, I said, man, I tried to get all that stuff in the booth, but I had to um, pull the pin and just decide to focus on this one and then get them parts straight in straight after. So not to worry, we um, wiped the entire job down with Prepsol, obviously, or wax and grease remover, then giving it a good tack cloth. We, I'm using the uh, DuPont Sontara tack cloths. I reckon they're pretty good. And I'm obviously just making sure I get inside all the nooks and crannies to make sure there's no little bits of dust that's gonna fly out. Uh, once I start painting, I've obviously already given it a really good blow down, but sometimes the um, lint free cloths even do leave a little bit of sort of fur and stuff behind. They shouldn't, but sometimes they do, uh, which is why we obviously always use that tack cloth. Um, look, you can follow all the procedures and still get dust and crap all through your job. It happens to me sometimes. Like I did a Volkswagen Golf this morning, and probably partly to do with a few things really. Um, but I thought it was going to come out real nice. The other guys were like dry sanding right outside the door of the booth and I've walked out and he's just at the same time he's gone and blown uh, a big bellowing amount of dust through the workshop and it's just landed on me and I'm like oh no. But oh well this is uh, spray painting for you and look at the end of the day the bosses around here they're never too overly fussed about it because they understand like they, they understand the workshop that we're working in. If they'd just gone and spent a couple of million dollars um, on upgrading the workshop and we're still getting a few bits of crap here and uh, you know so some jobs that were actually yeah full of crap I'm not gonna lie some of them especially in that other booth you know it can be quite touch and go then it might be a different thing you know but they they get they understand what's going on they're never gonna really come down and start yelling if it's every single job and it's just crap all through it they might start saying you know you might want to actually start wearing a paint suit or filtering the paint into your gun or tack clothing your jobs but you know if it's ever just now and then that it's never really a big deal but that aside this job did come out quite well I was pretty happy with it but the gun I'm using for base coat is still my Segola 4600 extreme DVR aqua is the air cap on it and it's 1.3 mil setup on it I did get the Walcom Genesee Carbonio um, but it was an okay gun. I just, did just find myself going straight back to the Segola and loving it again. Um, I actually went and changed back over to my 
GTI Pro with the T20 for base coat recently. And I personally prefer the um, Segola these days, it, especially in the warmer weather. It just seems to smash out that bit more paint. And if you're not getting enough base coat on in each pass in the warmer weather, it can be problematic. And like the, the base coat can start drying as you're spraying and all that overspray will sort of start balling up. And then when you go to clear over it, it'll look like somebody's basically thrown a handful of uh, sand at your paint jobs. And it's, yeah, not that you've actually done anything wrong by keeping your body clean or tack ragging it it's just that the paint has actually become its own crap on the paintwork if that makes sense but anyway you probably did notice i was using some blending clear before the americans call that wet bed uh, you can also call it a base coat blender there's a few different names for it but basically what it is it's just clear base coat as you can see in this gun again and i'm using it on the bar because i'm uh, blending this bumper bar here too um, this colour here is probably dark enough that I didn't absolutely have to use it, but if I'm ever 50-50 on it, I just use it. Like I'd rather spend, what is that, 20 seconds to spray a bit of it down before I do my blend, than get it out into the sun and start scratching my head thinking, geez, I wish I used that wet bed, you know. Um, but yeah, like this colour here, like it's quite dark, but it also does have quite a bit of coarse metallic in it. It's actually a pretty cool colour, I quite like it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not usually too over the moon about some of these fancy colors um, But this one here just really pops when you get it out in the Sun um, We'll have a look at it right at the end when it's out in the Sun So if you hang around to the end of this video, I've actually included some uh, lol cow footage at the end um, So make sure you do hang around for that and we can all have a laugh at a mega run But that's our base coat just about sorted as you probably noticed I did put three coats down just to ensure I had coverage you could just about see that it was covered after two, but it can never hurt to put that last coat down, just to be sure. Um, that's my rule of thumb. That's what it's always been with solvent anyway. make Get it so that you think it looks covered, and then put another half a coat on, you know, just sort of a effect coat, I guess, um, for especially these metallic colors. You want those uh, metallics to stand up nicely. If you go and put the um, third coat on too wet, the metallics can sometimes lie down because the, the paint's actually starting to flow a little bit. Then those metallic flakes can start to lie down. And you'll actually get a bit of a different look as well. So as you might have noticed, this is the Welcome Genesee Carbonio back in action. Probably pronounced the shit out of that completely wrong, but um, I did my best at least. It's probably more of a Carbonio, something like that with the Italian accent. But I, I cannot really bolt the gun the way it actually sprays, and I did mention that in the review. Um, you might notice that there's a, a digital gauge missing off the bottom of it because it really did start pissing me off. I'm not a real big fan of that gauge, so I whacked one of those cheap a and I ones on there, and it's like a new gun to me. That was probably my biggest, uh, yeah, criticism of that gun, and yeah, I just didn't fully understand why they had the carbon casing. Now, the name of the gun is 360 Carbonio, so 360, and that actually uh, is the weight of the gun. Now, being that it's carbon fiber, one would think, okay, well, they've made it carbon fiber for the weight savings. But that's actually not why you've got the carbon fiber casing on the outside of the gun. It is because, and I would thank uh, the YouTube user Saderman Schmidt for uh, letting me know that the reason these do have the carbon fiber casing, it's actually for insulation. Now, I did hear somebody say something about this a while ago. I just wasn't uh, freshened up on the fact when I did make that review. But the reason it's got the carbon fiber casing is because it is a good insulator for heat and the full system that this gun is designed for is a heated air system. And Sardaman told me that the air is heated up to like 130 Fahrenheit. And I sort of did the uh, rough translation and it's like 55 degrees Celsius the air is heated to before it actually comes up to the gun and supposedly it really speeds up uh, paint drying times, booth times. Um, Sardaman said that he had a friend in a body shop, he had two spray booths, uh, they had too much work, they needed to um, get an extra booth, but by getting that system, they were able to save on the extra booth. Um, it was an expensive system to fit, he did say it was about $30,000, but he said it was cheaper than the other option of $100,000 or so to get a new spray boost. So that's the only uh, real feedback I can say about the actual heated uh, air system. But um, yeah, it, it sounds good. And I can uh, verify for Cider Man, he's been a 
very uh, positive influence on this channel and a good wealth of knowledge. He's been in the trade for quite some time. I'm pretty sure it was him that also said that the guy that's using it, um, he had to wear a glove also. So the carbon fiber casing still wasn't quite enough. Like you do have to wear a specific glove. So that can get to be a little bit of a pain in the ass when you're spraying. Cause as you can see, I'm just wearing the um, nit nitrile uh, gloves when I'm spraying. So you'd have to wear a specific uh, heat resistant glove. So um, yeah, I mean, it's something that 99.9% .9 of my viewers will most likely never get that system in, but there may be one person out there who's in the same situation as what I mentioned previously. They just need that little bit more production. They can't uh, justify putting an extra spray booth in. Um, there's, an, there's another option out there for you. So I would recommend, obviously, doing a bit of research into it, um, finding out some other people that have it and get their feedback from it first. Um, but yeah, there's another option out there. And you've definitely got to give uh, Walcom credit for the innovation into the industry. It's something that no one else has been doing so far that I'm aware of anyway. And uh, yeah, good on you for doing that. Now this gun itself, it is a bit on the pricey side. So I think it's around $700. It's not too far off the price of a SATA. Does it spray any better than a GTI Pro Lite? Does it spray any better than a SATA? No, but it definitely doesn't spray any worse than those two mentioned guns, or the top guns anyway, you know? It's a great gun, and as far as it sprays, I really can't fault it, as I've mentioned a couple of times before. You can get some really nice finishes with it, and I've been really enjoying using it. It does seem to have a, a decent build quality too, um, as you would expect from a gun that price. There you go, 17 years in the trade and I'm still excited once I smash in a nice coat of clear on. Still love this shit. When am I going to get bored of it, if ever? I don't know, there's just something about it. I love it. So you've probably noticed that I did the uh, half coat, wet coat style application. Tack and whack, grip and rip, call it what you will. Um, but that's with the standoff standard clear. And I just put one coat on, bang, straight away, put your next coat on, job done. So I'm using the VOC hardener in it, and um, yeah, it's quite a good quality clear. I've really been enjoying it. We used to use the crystal clear, and um, yeah, really enjoying using this uh, standard clear. All I ask is that you show Moses a little bit of respect in the comment section. It was obviously a mistake. He'd gone and changed his gun settings. I set him up. He was painting really well. I didn't even have to go in with him for a while. What a monster. <laughs> Moses, what are you doing? I don't know, it's even worth trying to get it out, but I'll put my filler in and start blocking and see how we go. Like shit like that, you know. But also what happened is uh, the one of the other painters that I work with took Moses into the booth, showed him how to do the tack and whack method, which you just saw me do on this uh, BMW, where you just put one coat on, smash another coat straight over it. And I was sort of thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, it's probably a little bit above an apprentice, you know, like you might want to learn to walk before you run. Um, and <laughs> pun not intended. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.